History contains all the greatest stories from the past. The best cliffhangers, the most evil characters, the most heroic characters, the most extraordinary tales of human endeavour, sacrifice, but also cruelty. That's why it makes great television. Uh, show me an ending to EastEnders that ends with a nuclear explosion like at Hiroshima. Show me a character as evil as Stalin was. It's a fantastic subject, and I had a chance to go and study that for three years. I get very sad when I hear politicians tr trying to teach citizenship in classes because, of course, citizenship is just history with a different name. If you want to understand our society, the ethnic makeup of our society, the linguistic makeup, the fact that we live on islands with uh, different groups of people who like to think of themselves having different identities, you need to study the history. It absolutely informs everything about the present in the United Kingdom and right across the British Isles. It's the only subject worth reading. To be able to just pick and choose from any period of the past, to understand why the Middle East is the way it is today, to understand the tensions between Europe and Africa, to look at how, how North America came to be in its current state. All these massive questions that help you understand the way the world is today. That's why it's fascinating. It's the greatest stories ever told. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. I thought I'd start really looking at television, kind of traditional media. I mean, there's one key point about television history, that the majority of people that watch television history at night on the BBC, for example, do not have a history GCSE. History isn't just something that people should watch because they feel they have to, or the BBC has to put on because they're licensed charter thing. We have to show that a history documentary can compete with any other form of programme making out there. Otherwise, they're just going to watch rubbish all the time. You are out there rolling your sleeves up, fighting with Coronation Street to try and get bums on seats. We've got to get out there, we've got to sharpen our elbows and make the past accessible to mass audiences. I mean, TV history, some people sort of sneer at it, saying that it's full of, you know, presenters who do things like this, dress up. The trouble is, there's nothing to show if you're making a programme about Iron Age Britain. There's a very limited amount of stuff to show. In the BBC, there's a real feeling the barbarians are at the gate, because they're traditional programme makers. And they make programmes that are watched by millions of people just because they're sitting at home. And actually, the last 10 years, we're seeing a completely different thing. We're seeing huge competition now from the internet. We're seeing competition from uh, already from things like iPlayer. One side had to give way. The internet is freedom. The internet's so exciting, because in television, you've got to get the director to agree, and the executive producer to agree, and then the channel to agree, and then the, someone else to agree. On internet, you just do whatever you want to do, and you just put it out there. And if it's rubbish, no one will look at it. And if it's good, some people might look at it. And that's what's so exciting. It's freedom, and it's just pursuing your own interests, undiluted individuality. It's wonderful. Normans may have been at a disadvantage at the bottom of the hill, but they the most important about the internet is it allows people to do exactly what they want to do. If they want to know more about the masonry of the castle, they can look that up. But if they want to know more about what it was like living in that castle and what they did with all the sewage, then they can look that up too. It's not me that's telling them what to look at. It's me just saying, well, look, these are the range of things that you can explore. Go for it. 174,000 people have watched How to Shoot a Medieval Longbow. It lasts a minute and a half and it's been up for a few months. It's absolutely extraordinary. But, for example, shooting a flintlock musket, no one's interested. There you go. History never gets boring for me, and if anything, the older I get, the more I see of the world, the more I look at current affairs and I experience politics in my own lifetime, the more interested I am in the past. I mean, what happened last time there was a coalition government in Britain? What happened last time there was genocide in Rwanda in the 1990s? Every day you go on life's journey, you get more and more interested about whether these things that you're seeing have ever happened before. And you realise that human beings, whether it's your parents, your grandparents, or people a thousand years ago, haven't changed very much. And, and they were all wrestling with the same problems that I'm wrestling with. Standing shoulder to shoulder, the men of the English army locked their shields together. If you love history, you will never be bored a day again in your life. Excellent defensive position. And I think the internet and television have got a fantastically interesting role to play in history, in our view of the past, and also in recording the present. So it's going to be of massive use to future historians.